Barak the Yahweh, Barak the Yahweh Shai, all praises, all honor, all glory be unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. As always, double honors to our apostles and our elders at Great Millstone that taught us his truth and who are ruling well in the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom, peace and love to you, Akim, that are prophets and teachers who are hazarding your lives to push the true wisdom knowledge and understanding of the scriptures to help edify the elect of the nation of Israel and to the rest of you believers, you Akim, Akwathium and children, Shalom, peace and love be unto you as well. Bloodstained wedding sheets. That's going to be the title of this lesson, Bloodstained Wedding Sheets, in which this lesson is inspired from a video of the guy from IUIC speaking to the man whom they had previously spoken to his two wives and basically telling them that they're going off by being with one man, uh, which is totally off on behalf of IUIC. And then they came back with a part two speaking to the actual husband and basically inspiring him to divorce one of his wives, which is completely off, you know, according to what they're teaching, that's off. And that's the reason why the scripture saying in First Timothy 1 and 7, and this is from the NLT, it says they want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they are talking about. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. It says even though they speak so confidently, and you notice this with individuals at IUIC, they'll speak about particular things with, with great confidence, <laughs> with great swelling confidence. But yet you don't know what the hell you're talking about. All right. And in doing that, all right, you take somebody that was already messed up in the mind and you make them even worse. You make them even worse off than what they were before. The book of Matthew 23 and 15 says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold the child of hell than yourselves. So you make these people wicked. All right. Indoctrinating them, you know, with your particular breakdowns, which are completely off concerning the law. All right, concerning the law. Now, when it comes down to marriage, all right, marriage begins when? All right, marriage begins first with a spousal. All right, when a woman is a spouse unto a man, that's really when it begins. And in our custom, sometimes you will wait a year. You know, but then <laughs> depending on certain circumstances, you know, it may not have to take a year, you know, for a man to get with his woman. But to seal the deal, there was a particular action that needed to take place. And what was that? That man had to pop that woman and take her virginity the book of Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, beginning at verse 13. And I'm going to read this from the GNT because it makes it plain. It says, suppose a man marries a young woman and later decides he doesn't want her. All right. What you got <laughs> some dudes with that nigga mentality in the nation of Israel, all right, which they'll get with a woman. And they do it completely just to satisfy their desires at the moment, but had no intentions on actually marrying that woman. After you take a woman's virginity and you humble her, she can't go and be with another man. Because if she do, that would defile her. Reading on, so, so he makes up false charges against her, accusing her of not being a virgin when they got married. So what was the action that took place for them to seal the deal? All right. They, they had sex. S-E-X. They had sex. 
And that man took that woman's virginity. All right, by breaking the hymen. And what happened when you break the hymen? All right, blood comes out. So reading on, if this happens, the young woman's parents are to take blood-stained wedding sheets that prove she was a virgin. And they are to show it in, in court to the town leaders. Because pre-adventure, if that woman didn't have her virginity, if she had already lain with a man before, all right, because that could have happened as well. You had um, um, men and women that were wicked. There's, there's a law on it that you're not supposed to prostitute your daughter. So they would take their daughter and give her to a man, you know, get the 50 shekels of silver, then take her, you know, and give her to another man. All right, basically hiring their daughter out for sex. But then you had a situation or situation, Salakia, where women would sneak off and play the harlot, you know, and get popped and then go and get, you know, popped again. So basically, if her virginity wasn't uh, uh, inside of her, then that would make that marriage illegitimate. All right. And that would be an act of adultery. And this happens all too much within this generation. And that's the reason why Yahweh Shai called this generation a generation of adulterers and adulteress. Because really, the women that we get with are supposed to be virgins. And when we deal with them, they're not supposed to deal with any other men. All right. They're supposed to only be with us for the rest of their lives until death. All right, really, there was no such thing as divorce all right, in the beginning. But Moses, because of the wickedness of Israel, all right, uh, um, made a, a, a decree for men to put away their wives and divorce because of their, their wickedness. But ultimately, in the beginning, there was no such thing. When you pop a woman, she was your wife forever. Until you died or until she died. Reading on, it says he has made false charges against her, saying that she was not a virgin when he married her. But here is the proof that my daughter was a virgin. Look at the blood stained wedding sheets. Then the town leaders are to take the husband and beat him. They are also to find him a hundred pieces of silver and give the money to the young woman's father because the man has brought disgrace on an Israelite woman. Moreover, uh, she will continue to be his wife and he can never divorce her as long as he lives. But if the charges be true and there is no proof that she was a virgin, then they are to take her out to the entrance of her father's house where the men of her city are to stone her to death. She, was, she has done a shameful thing among our people by having intercourse before she was married. So what it says, while she was still living in her father's house, if this uh, way... You will get rid of this evil. So that shows you the importance of uh, SEX in, in marriage. All right. A man is supposed to take the, the, the virginity of the woman that he's a spouse to. And that's a spouse to him. And that seals the deal of the marriage, man. I want to grab a scripture that came to mind. This is the book of Sirach, the 42nd chapter. In verse 9, it says, The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, 
and the care for her virginity take of oh, so like the care for her take of away sleep when she is young lest she pass the flower of her age and being married lest she be hated in her virginity this is the point obviously i gave it away earlier <laughs> by the slip of the tongue in her virginity lest she should be defiled lost my virginity and turned into a hoe and gotten with child in her father's house and having a husband lest she should misbehave herself and when she is married lest she should be barren and that's the reason why the scriptures say keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter you know she goes around in her promiscuity and letting you know everyone that's horny tap it why are you why are you doing this this is my job. What you mean? This this your job? Yes, this is my job. It's you don't have me. this to do. Um, you come two kids later to come tell me what I need to be doing. I'm That's here. Crazy. I'm here. I'm no, here you now. You don't have to be here. You have been here all this time, and for you to come try to come in my life and tell me what I should be doing, it's just Seriously? crazy. Yeah. I, I do have this to do. I, I have to do. I have mouths to feed. I have my own mouth to feed. I have a, I I'm have to provide father. a roof of I have, we have nowhere to stay. I'm, I'm your busting, father. I'm, I could get I'm you off these streets. What would it you take, take for me to get you off these streets? Nothing. Stand my business. That's what I'm, you can do. Why, 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 why are you doing, doing this? What, why what doing the f are you doing out with these cameras in my face? What the f is all of this? To get you off these streets. No sir. No sir. Come talk to me. Talk. What can I do? No I, I love you. Me no and your mother, me. we ain't raised you to be no this way. Me. I'm not trying to hear all of that. My mother loves me. My dad loves me. Come on. Me. Stop. No. What can no. I do? Please. Like, I, I will do whatever it takes. I'll pay you. I'll get you off these streets. Let's talk about it. Go find somebody else to come pay me. How about that? I'm your father. You're going to listen to me. You ain't been my father. Don't come with all that title shit now. That's just I don't crazy. want I don't want it. Just you're not sense. doing this. I'm it not letting make you sense. do this no more. Bye. Huh? And eventually she gets pregnant while she's living with you. That's a that's a shameful thing. That's a very shameful thing within the nations of Israel. That's a very disgraceful thing. And it's something that brings a laughing stock upon your household. When your daughter is a hoe. I remember um <laughs> I, I want to say that's the movie Life with uh, Martin Lawrence. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Eddie Murphy. I'm that baby's papa, you know. <laughs> when you had the line of Jakes, they 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 wanted to, you know, take them Jakes out, or the uh, the one Jake, because he had been dealing with with her, and she had been dealing with him, you know, the Edomite woman. But if I'm not mistaken, they took the woman and hit her. There's another movie that 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 showed that as well. Where they would send their daughters off to boarding schools or whatever. But they really didn't go to a boarding school. They went somewhere to have the baby in secrecy so that nobody else would know because it was a shameful thing. All right, really, you would rather your daughter get married and, and, and do it the right way. But that happens you know, once a woman reaches a certain age and she starts feeling a certain way, that's the reason why the scripture says, marry her off while she is young and thou have performed a weightier matter. So the way that you sealed the deal is through marriage. I mean, through <laughs> the way you sealed the, the marriage is through SEX, all right, penetrating the hymen. And um, this is going to prove this, but this is using a particular scripture out of the New Testament and dealing with a particular individual's name who was a scoffer. All right. His name was Hymenaeus, but his name was was a Greek name and it basically honored a Greek deity of marriage. The book of 2 Timothy 2 and 16, it says, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto ungodliness, and their wor word will eat as doth a canker of whom Hymenaeus and Philetus. 
Now, when you go into the name for Hymenaeus, is G5211, which is Umeneos. Uh, and I know that the, the devil may say it a different way if you hit the button for him to pronounce it. But when you go into the name, the word for Hymenaeus or the name Hymenaeus means belonging to marriage. Belonging to marriage. All right, it says down here, it says, um, Strong's definition, Hymen, the God of weddings. Now, why would Hymen be the God of weddings? What is a Hymen? Going into the definition, and this is from the Western uh, Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Hymen, a fold of mucous membrane partly closing the orifice of the vagina. But then it also says in the second definition, the Greek God of marriage. Because the way that a man and a woman sealed the deal of the marriage was for that man to penetrate the woman's vagina. And that's how they were married. That's how they became married. So going from here to the book of Matthew 5 and 31, because now that a man is married, let's say, for instance, a man penetrates the hymen of, of one woman. Then he penetrates the hymen of another woman. Then he penetrates the hymen of another woman. That means that all three of those women will be his wives according to what we read earlier in the book of Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, verse 13. Now, although this is not true, just entertaining the thought. Let's say, for instance, once we get to the New, uh, New Testament, right? And you say that we're under the New Covenant in which we're not under the new covenant. We will not be under the new covenant until the kingdom of heaven. But even under the new covenant, we're going to have multiple wives, according to Isaiah, the fourth chapter. And many other scriptures. A little one shall become a thousand. And a, a, a small one shall become a, a, you know, roughly paraphrasing that verse. So how is that going to happen? One man could possibly have a thousand wives in the kingdom of heaven, in which he will. And you have many men within the scriptures that had multiple wives, but it never said that they, they sinned against the heavenly father. Even when King David committed adultery with Uriah the Hittite's wife, all right, the prophet said unto him, you know, the heavenly father spoken to him. I said, look, if... um." If you wanted another wife, all you had to do was ask me. So you're going off at IUIC. That which you're learning from your, your uh, leaders over at IUIC, all right, and you come into the thing, you throw in your purple shirt with your fringes, they make you two-fold times the child of hell. So anyways, the point that I was making Let's say, for instance, you did it in your ignorance, but now somehow you came to the light. And this is just uh, um, making an example because you can actually have more than one wife. But let's say, for instance, you get to the in, uh, into NT, all right, and, and someone's teaching you learn that you can only have one wife. Does that mean that you put away your other two wives? And only deal with your favorite one. What happens to those other women that you humble and you took their virginity? If you put them away. Except it be for adultery. Then you cause them to commit adultery. You cause them to commit adultery. And whoever lay with them and take them as a wife to commit adultery. The book of Matthew 5 and 31 through 33. It have been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him 
give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed for adultery. Again, ye have heard that it have been said by them of old time, thou should not forswear uh, thyself, but shall perform unto Yahweh thine oath. So um, if you put away your wife, all right, which is singular, but then it's also plural. Because each, each, if you have multiple wives, each wife is your wife. So you got wife one, wife two, wife three, and so on and for all, so forth. If you put away your wife uh, saving for the cause of adultery, which means that she went out and she, lain, she had lain with another man, then basically you cause that woman to commit adultery. But if she actually went out and lay with another man, then you have justifiable cause. Now, a scripture that this guy brought up was Tobit, the, the 14th chapter, right? To try to prove that you go to Esau Edom for a marriage certificate or marriage contract. All right, which... This isn't something that was done all the time, all right, in marriages, all right, within our people. You say, well, we're not in, in our, in our, uh, uh, the, the place. Basically, we're, we're not in our kingdom. We're under Esau Edom. So you got to go to them for a valid marriage certificate, roughly paraphrasing what he said. He didn't say that exactly. But here it is. You niggas can build up your own schools. You could, um. You could um, uh, uh, make fringes. You can start up all these business. You can make up a, a rapping label, all right, with rappers. But you can't learn how to do notary to make your own legal documents. But then again, you don't you don't need the legal documents. All right, we have a particular law that we live by. Now. When you go to the book of Tobit, the seventh chapter and the 14th verse, I'm going to read it here in in the good, good news. It says, and Etna, his wife, took a paper and did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it. Now, what was the particular reason of doing that? Well, one, there was a transaction that was done. So ultimately, this is also a receipt. One, there was a, 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 a bunch of different things at play. One, this was to prove that what they were doing was legitimate according to the law of Moses. All right. That that uh, Sarah belonged unto Tobias, according to what was written within the law of Moses, which we're going to get in just a moment Two, All right. You had seven men that had already passed away because the demon was killing them. All right. And then three, all of Raguel's substances of his household would eventually go to the Tobias once Ragiel died. So now to read this within the GNT, it says Ragiel asked his wife to bring him a blank scroll so that he could write out the marriage contract. All right, Etna brought him the scroll and Ragiel wrote out the agreement saying that Sarah was given to Tobias according to the teaching of the law of Moses. Now, before we get that particular law of Moses, let's read this in Tobit 6 and 10. The angel said to the young man, young man, brother, today we shall lodge with Raguel, who is thy cousin. He also have 
a one only daughter named Sarah, I will speak for her that she may be given thee for a wife. For to thee doth the right of her of her appertain, seeing thou art only her kindred. So she didn't have any other family outside of that. He didn't have any any sons. Reguel didn't have any sons to inherit his inheritance. He only had one daughter. And outside of that one daughter, the closest to kin would be Tobias to take her as a wife. Reading on, it says, and the maid is fair and wise, which means that she looked good. And not only did she look good, she was smart. Uh, the scriptures say that uh, the discretion of a woman will fatten a man's bones. So you want to get a woman that, that's wise, that has character, that knows how to carry herself, not a slut. You're a slut. You're a slut. Uh, reading on, it says, now, therefore, hear me and I will speak to her father. And when we return from Ragus, we will celebrate the marriage. For I know that Ragiel cannot marry her to another according to the law of Moses. But he shall be guilty of death because the right of inheritance doth rather appertain to thee than to an, uh, any other. Then the young man answered uh, the angel, I have heard, brother Azariah, that this maid have been given to seven men who all died in the marriage chamber. And now I am the only son of my father, and I am afraid, lest if I go in unto her, I die as the others before, for a wicked spirit loveth her, which hurteth, uh, hurteth nobody, but those which come unto her. Which means when they come to go and pop her, that demon would kill them. Wherefore, I also fear lest I die and bring my father's and, and my mother's life because of me to, uh, to the grave with sorrow, for they have no other son to bury them. But this was all done through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh so that eventually she would be given to Tobias as a wife. Now, there's a particular law, all right, in which basically uh, uh, Reguel and Etna warned Tobias, all right, before, because they were afraid. They're like, well, damn, he's going he's gonna to go in and die too. But let us, let us write it down, you know, what's transpiring here. So that we can we can be clear of this young man's blood in the regard of our cousin. But then there was other things that was written down within that particular contract as well. So reading on, this is the law that proves that the next to kin is supposed to take, you know, the woman. The book of Deuteronomy 25 and 5, it says... If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she bears shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate of the elders and say, my husband's brother refuses to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of the city shall call him and speak unto him and and if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her because he can refuse her, 
But ultimately, he will have to deal with the shame of refusing her. All right, which you had an instance of that within the book of Ruth. All right, when Boaz, you know, went into the next to Ken to take a um, Ruth. But however, the guy said, no, you know, because if I if I dealt with her, then now I, I would basically have to, you know, give up basically what I got over here. So the guy said, no, you know, I I, uh, I refuse. So the, the next person that it fell on to basically take her w was Boaz. Reading on, it says, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoes from off his foot and spit on his face and shall answer and say, so shall it be done unto the man that would not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that hath his shoe loose. So this is a law, you know, pertaining to what happens if someone died. You know, a man died, but he didn't, he didn't have any children. So basically, you know, the, the responsibility will fall into his brother. But if his brother, if he had no brother, then it will fall into the next of kin. And now going into another scripture, the book of Exodus 22 and 17, it says, if her father, other, I'm sorry, let me go to 22 and 16 and 17. This is Exodus 22 and 16. It says, and if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, which means that she's not engaged to any other man. And lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Which means, what does it mean to endow? Let's look it up. The word uh, for endow in the Hebrew is mahar, which is H4117. To obtain or acquire by paying purchase price, give a dowry to obtain an exchange. So you, we, you... In Israel, we had a custom when we paid a dowry. We paid the bride's price. In the NLT, it reads this. It says, if a man seduces a virgin who is not engaged to anyone and has sex with her. All right. Which um, he, he popped her. Okay. He penetrated her hymen. He took her virginity. He must pay the customary bride price and marry her. But if her father refuses to let him marry her, the man must still pay him an amount equal to the bride price of a virgin. So. The, um, basically, <laughs> I don't really like how that read because it makes it seem as if he's. His, the father didn't allow him to marry her or whatever. That basically, this man would have to pay the, the dowry. And then after paying the dowry, he would take that woman all right, as his bride, as his wife. So that shows you that, that uh, sex all right, is, 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 a, is a marriage. But let's say, for instance, if a father refused to give her unto him and, and, and the man wasn't never able to take that woman to be his wife or whatever, she's still his wife and she would never be able to be with another man. So this is how marriage was performed within the nation of Israel. All right. It um, rather there was a, a, a receipt of, of or a contract. All right. This is how marriage was performed in Israel. And all the way up until the time of Yahawashai, you had men that were having multiple wives. It just wasn't spoken about. 
Why do you think it says in, in 1 Timothy 3 and 2, it says a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. And this is dealing with somebody that wanted the position of an elder within the church. Because you had men that were having multiple wives, man. But if they wanted that particular role, they wanted to be a bishop, then they had to be a husband of one wife. It says right here in Titus 1 and 5, it says, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set uh, in order the things that are wanting, and obtain, uh, so like an ordained elders in every city, as I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. So that does not mean that you can't have multiple wives. That just means if you wanted that particular position within the church, all right, then you had to have one wife. But ultimately, it was your choice if you wanted to have one wife or not. Because ultimately, when you have multiple wives, your attention has to be divided up amongst them. And then the problems that comes with having multiple wives, the jealousy and the issues and things like that, that distracts you. But the time is going to come when we will have multiple wives and we can have, have them now. But is it expedient to have them now? No. So in the, in the kingdom of heaven, when we're under the new covenant, we're going to have multiple wives. The book of Isaiah 4 and 1. And this is going to begin before that time. So how much more so in that day? All right, it says in Isaiah 16 and 22, a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. If Yahweh, uh, I, Yahweh, will hasten it in his time. So how would a little, uh, a little one become a thousand or a small one a strong nation? All right, King Solomon had uh, uh, 700 wives and 300 concubines. So what, what, do you, what do you think will happen if a man has 700 wives and 300 concubines? All right, that's a possibility of having, you know, a thousand or more children. Isaiah 4 and 1, In that day seven, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So this has been blood-stained wedding sheets. I truly hope that this lesson was edifying. All praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rekai Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders at Great Millstone. Peace and love, salutation, mercy be unto the whole full elect. Shalom, Abad, Babar, Kwambakiyam. Shalom.